Our codec avatar technology has shown groundbreaking realism when capturing faces, but genuine human communication requires the full body language. And in some cases, nonverbal cues are even more important than verbal ones. For example, take a look at this image and see what it tells you about the state of mind of these two people. Now, look at this collection of points and see what happens when we animate them. Like even a collection of dots carries information and communication when it's in motion. Motion tells us about engagement, agreement, trust, and empathy. The technology used to study and capture human motion has come a long way since Edward Mybridge's pioneering work in the 1800s to motion capture in dedicated studios and, more recently, on-set performance capture. When I worked on these technologies at Lucasfilm a while ago, we had to deal with sometimes uncooperative A-list actors who were somehow becoming reluctant to wear a tight spandex suit like this one here. So it got us developing a new kind of markerless motion capture technology. Now, the problem with this approach is that, sure, you do look a little goofy in that suit, but it also requires a lot of hardware and a team of dozens of highly skilled artists using an enormous amount of reference data and working for months to build a single avatar. So clearly, nothing scalable for broad use in VR. Another challenge is giving people the ability to customize their avatar. I mean, altering our physical appearance is part of being human, after all. People shave their beards, they dress up, they put on makeup in real life. So why not allow them to customize their avatar size, gender, muscularity, posture, style, or just clothing? But then how do we preserve the essence of a person in an avatar when they change their look? Well, it turns out a big part of it has to do with how we move, how we use space and time. Every person has movements that are unique to them. For instance, an individual may talk with her hands or tilt her head a certain way or shuffle her feet. These motions and dynamics are a key part of her personality and expressivity. They're the way many of her personal traits and emotions are conveyed. Capturing them lends authenticity to avatars. But if you're going to replicate something as nuanced as a strut or a nervous tick, you first need to understand how the human body works. So, an individual's appearance and motion is the, com is the product of many complex and deeply interconnected elements. Like your brain controls your muscles, which drive the bones, which in turn move the tissues and the skin, and finally, the fabric of clothing on top. So in order to reproduce all of these and render a complete 3D avatar with data from only a limited number of sensors, we need to use a body model that replicates the human anatomy. This model needs to be fully adaptive to perfectly match any individual automatically, and it needs to be physically based to replicate actual, genuine behaviors. So how do we do it? Now, to build that model, we start from the inside out. So first, we study medical literatures and use advanced medical imaging references to design an anatomically correct human skeleton with the proper articulations and degrees of freedom. So that model is far more complex than those using in traditional animation. Think of how your shoulder blade slides, like your hips roll, or your joint stretch even a little bit, just to enable you to do the subtle gestures that are unique to you. Next, we match the skeleton to the user's body structure and animate it in real time. And as the user moves around, the model continues to adapt to this unique individual and is more faithfully able to reproduce that person's movement. So as you can see in this video, the skeleton is matched with Tony, one of our researchers, who is observed by a single sensor. And notice how subtle motions like, like the shoulder roll here are accurately captured. All right, well, we can't stop at the skeletal level, though. It looks a little creepy. And what really drives the motion of the skeleton are the muscles. Now, the muscle movement is critical to understanding behavior and intention. So this sequence here shows real-time tracking of Tony's muscle activation. 
Now, to do this, we use the inner shell of his, of his body and the musculoskeletal system to help us predict and stabilize his motion. Modeling the deformation that occur when the muscles contract is also critical to creating a realistic reconstruction of the body. Now, of course, skin, hair, and clothing are the most visible layers, and for clothes and hair to interact realistically with the body, we need to reconstruct and simulate them as faithfully as possible. So here we use visual observations to infer the body geometry and reconstruct its shape. And then we apply physics-based model to reproduce actual cloth deformations. And we need to be able to accurately match people's actual garments, even under challenging circumstances like this here. All right, so now let me show you what this looks like in an early prototype of a simple live interaction. So here you'll see two people, Alex and Tony, who could be remote in different locations, animating their avatars in a shared virtual environment, that soccer field on top. So keep in mind that doing this without any suit or marker, in real time, with minimal hardware for capture, is groundbreaking. So let's take a look. And watch her reaction here, how she jumps. Like she's totally immersed in the experience. This is very cool. Now, as you can imagine from that example, latency will be critical. It's one of the big challenges we need to overcome before this turns into a shippable product. We also need a way for people to easily generate and animate their avatars using off-the-shelf sensors. Now, before we ship this, we also need to make sure we answer some key questions around privacy, and security. One of the questions is making sure avatars are authentic. And there are a number of ways we can do that. For example, we can make sure your avatar is tied to your account and your identity. To prevent others from accessing your avatars, security and identity verification options will also be key. So fingerprint and facial recognition are already used in mobile devices around the world. So building them into future devices may ensure only you can access your avatar via your device. Another critically important question is how we make sure these body models work equally well for the vast diversity of body shapes, sizes, skin tones, and clothing in the world. So we're making sure our data sets are as diverse as possible to prevent issues like Lade talked about earlier for Portal. So obviously, we're still years away from this type of technology reaching consumer headsets, but we're already thinking about these questions, and we're confident we'll land them before the ships. Developing realistic avatars may be one of the most important factors in making VR and eventually AR a part of our everyday lives. It's going to enable billions of people to work, meet, and play with anyone, anywhere in the world. Just imagine teleporting to your job or being truly present at a family birthday party halfway across the world. This ability to defy distance and break the link between where one lives and how one's able to make a living, or the friendships one can have, will be transformative. Like, what a gift that would be. This is what drives my work.